Today, we are going to run through a quick start on the Fuji Portaflow FSC3. Coming up next on Tech Review. <laughs> The FSC3 is the latest revision to the Fuji Portaflow series portable ultrasonic transit time flow meter. Not much difference from the previous model, FSC2, except the latest firmware upgrade, which slightly enhances the performance speed and includes the latest transducer models. The latest firmware is backward compatible with the FSC2, so when you send in your meter for its annual calibration, if requested, we can upgrade the firmware for you. Now, this is a quick start, so hang on, here we go. Here are the application requirements for your ultrasonic transit time flow meter. This technology works on clean liquid, and it requires no suspended solids. So, it will work on an ultra-pure liquid like refined fuels or demineralized water or RO water, and of course, it also works on process applications like drinking water, well water, processed chemicals, cooling tower water, sewerage, etc. You know, applications that are up to about 2% suspended solids. So sludge and slurry heavy solid applications are not recommended and are better suited for an ultrasonic Doppler flow meter. Next, you need a full pipe of liquids. If the pipe is not full, this meter will not work. Contact us regarding open channel flow meters. So, assuming you have a pumped full pipe flow, for optimum performance, you will also need some straight run of pipe. The generic rule of thumb is to mount your transducer with 10 pipe diameters of straight run after an elbow and 5 pipe diameters before the next elbow. Should you not have this amount of straight run of pipe, the best effort solution would be to mount the transducer downstream about two-thirds of the available footprint. Now the problem is the lack of straight run of pipe will cause turbulence and in some cases cause the meter to fault out and provide you with no data whatsoever. After turning the flow meter on, this is the display screen which will indicate flow. Now we need to program your flow meter for your particular application. So first select menu then we will select Site Setup, Enter. We will select Process Setting with the down arrow, Enter. And now we will need to put the pipe information in. Now, this is most important. If you do not have the correct pipe information, you will not get a good answer. So, you can refer to the ANSI pipe chart book which is enclosed in the carrying case of the flow meter. Or you can always go to our website and you can download the same chart. And last resort, take a tape measure, wrap it around the pipe outside diameter, divided by 3.14, which is pi. Then you will get the pipe outside diameter. So, then we will hit the enter button. You have the choice of outer diameter or circumference. We'll select outer diameter, hit enter. And then this will allow you to move the cursor right and left to change the dimension. We've set this up for a two inch Schedule 40 carbon steel pipe. So everything's all set for that particular size. Now we're gonna go down to the pipe material. The pipe material is another drop down menu. We've selected carbon steel. And as you scroll down, there's a whole host of different pipe materials. After that, you will go down to the wall thickness. Again, using the ANSI pipe chart for a Schedule 40, the wall thickness is 0.2030. We've programmed that in or adjusted as you need be, and we're all set to go. Moving to the next page is the liner material. Now, most pipes do not have a liner. Exceptions to that traditionally are things used in the water and wastewater industry, which are cast iron and ductile iron, which have mortar linings. You'll find some industrial applications that'll have Teflon or Kynar or other types of liners, but again, not that common for most applications. So in this case there, if you had it, you'd program in for it, but we're just going to skip that. The next page is the type of process liquid or fluid you're going to work with. 
And boys and girls, 99% of the time it's going to be water. So if you were to change it to something else, we would just hit enter and now we have a drop down menu of a whole host of different flavors of liquid. And you could just scroll down and pick what you want. In this case, we're selecting water. Then it fills out all that information so you don't really have to do anything other than to go down to the sensor mount. Now, the sensor mount, you have two choices. Again, hitting the enter button. V method and the Z method. The V method is basically the transducers are on the same side of the pipe, which is the normal install for applications, say, half inch to 24 inches. The Z configuration are when the two sensors are across the pipe, one in each side. In that case there, they're normally used on very large pipe applications, in some cases 24 inches and larger. So for our application, we're going to select the V method. And the V method is all set and done. The last page is the sensor type. So the transducer will have a part number stamped on the side of the transducer. And in that case there, we would just hit enter and then scroll down to the appropriate transducer model number. The next configuration is the trans voltage. Now, most of the time, again, you will not need to make this adjustment. This adjustment is for additional power for nasty applications. So normally you're set in the second power level position, which is fine for just about every application. Every once in a while you come across that rusty, crusty 100-year-old pipe and you can't get a signal. The next thing we would ask you to do is increase the power to the higher level. And when you're done, return it back to the lower level. So we'll just leave it alone at the second position. So after that, we hit the decision button and the decision button will tell us the spacing. Now, see this zeroing adjustment? Do not adjust the zero on your flow meter, almost for all applications. It's a default for the people that are in the laboratory with the white coats. You really can't get a good zero in the field. The auto zero for the flow meter is just fine and dandy for almost all applications. So do not adjust the zero, but you do see the sensor spacing on the bottom. So in this case for our two inch application, carbon steel pipe, the sensor spacing is 1.537 inches using the V method. So about an inch and a half is the adjustment that you're gonna make on the spacing of your transducer. Now we will need to adjust the spacing of our transducer. So the spacing was an inch and a half. You can use a tape measure, but these are graduated. That's an inch and that's a half. Tighten down the sensor. This is the spacing we need for that particular application. And notice the transducer also has sensor adjustments going up and down. So basically you need to apply your acoustic coupling like toothpaste on a toothbrush to the transducer, put it on the pipe, and adjust the downward position until you have mechanical contact to the pipe surface. And it will squeeze out most of the grease. You can handheld the transducer to the pipe, or you can strap it on. To install the transducer cables, press the connector until they click, The cables are now installed, but again, it doesn't make any difference depending on the way you connect the other transducers on the other side. Whatever your preference is, as long as you match the connectors on the other side on the transducer. Next, remove any insulation or loose debris from the pipe surface and apply the acoustic coupling to the transducer. You can handhold it on the pipe for quick spot checks or for longer flow studies or surveys, clamp it to the pipe. The smaller pipe transducer uses reusable zip ties and for larger pipe transducers we use hose clamps or ratchet straps. If possible, mount the transducer off the top of the pipe just in case it has air in it. Now you can read the flow. The display is a GUI interface, so you can move things around. We ship it with the top line indicating flow rate in GPM or any other engine unit you prefer. 
The second line is velocity, and the third line is total flow. And it also has a reset button. And now you're reading flow. As you can see, it's pretty easy to install your Fuji Portafol ultrasonic flow meter. However, if you need any further assistance, you can always contact our support team. There's a link over here. If you'd like to learn more about programming the Fuji Portaflow data logger for a survey or programming your meter for monitoring BT or energy applications, we have additional training videos. I'd like to thank you for watching our program. For more information on today's subject, check out our show notes and links that are listed below. And if you like what you see, subscribe to our channel. As always, we would greatly appreciate any suggestions of technology that we should include on our tech review program. This has been Brent Baird for Instruments Direct. We'll see you next time.